Hello there everybody, this is AR Videos. I know we haven't made a video in quite a while, but today what I'll be talking about is how to learn to make your own video games. Now some people are led to the misconception that all you need to do is learn programming and you can make your own game. But that is very wrong. There are many jobs and departments that go into making a great game. You may be a good programmer, but your games still turn out looking crappy because you may not be a very good animator or a drawer. So, what I'm trying to say is programming is not for everybody, and that doesn't mean you can't make your own games if you don't know how to program. There are many other opportunities that you can take. Now, if programming is what you want, then you should continue to watch this video series. Now, I can't just go ahead and teach you how to type some code because that would be pointless. What I want to teach you first is some of the basic concepts of programming. Trust me, it may sound a little bit boring right now, but you need these concepts to be a good programmer. It helped me a ton when I first started. And plus, these concepts can be applied to any programming language, not just restricted to one. Now, for these tutorials, I'll be using the Java programming language. It's one of the fastest growing and most popular programming languages today. And the program I'll be using is JGrasp. JGrasp is a free program. You can just download it. I'll have a link in the description. And what I like about it is when you type in reserved words that are used as commands in Java, they light it up or highlight it with a color. And that makes it very easy to program. Plus, you can generate a CSD, which is like this blue tree diagram thing that sort of indents your code and makes it easier to read. It's really helpful for beginners. Now, I can't just go ahead and teach you some of the codes because that would be useless. You need to learn these sort of concepts to understand what code you're typing in and why you need it and also plus you need to learn how to apply it on your own I, you can't just keep copying and pasting whatever I show in these videos or whatever anybody else shows so let's get started alright the first concept you'll have to learn is that computers are absolutely stupid yes they are very stupid now you may be thinking hey it can do math faster than me well that's because it's programmed it already knows what to do and it's been thoroughly explained how to do these things now it can't think for itself that's why it's stupid you it needs something to tell it what to do and that's what you as the programmer is supposed to do you have to type it in but of course we can't understand machine code machine code may be fast to execute but it's hard to communicate so basically that's what the programming language does you type in your code, Java translates it into bytecode, which the machine reads, and it basically runs it. So computers may be fast, but that doesn't automatically make them smart. Now, I'm sorry if you sort of feel like you're back in school, but you have to learn some vocabulary now. In fact, what is vocabulary? Vocabulary is all the set of words in a language, and that applies to programming languages too. All the set of words that make up a programming language. Syntax is how sentences, or in programming as it's called, statements are put together. And then semantics is how they are interpreted. All right then, congratulations, you have made it through my boring lectures. But there's still one thing I have to beg you before we start actual programming. Now, like I said before, make absolutely sure that this is the path you want to take. Imagine if you were in kindergarten and you're working on an arts craft project. The guy making the outline for the drawing is sort of like the level designer in real life. The guy coloring it in is sort of like the arts guy in real life. He basically makes the 3D models add like sounds and voice actors. And then there's you, the programmer, who basically glues it all together. Now, you can't have a good art craft project without all the three ingredients. So don't expect that just because you're a good programmer, your game will turn out good. And also... Really, most people don't have all three skills. Some people might, and they might be good. You know, like the Minecraft guy, Notch. He, he's good at all three. He made a good game. But really, that's a rarity. You're going to need help from friends or hire someone. And also, this is just how it is. You, to get good results, you have to work hard. Now, some of the stuff we may talk about may seem a little boring. You're like, oh, this is too hard. I don't have the patience for this. But you have to work hard to get good, good results in life. And just, you know, you may think, oh, it's a computer, it's going to be easy, I don't have to do much work. It's not true. You have to do just as much work as any other job. Now, let's get started. Now, remember the program I talked about earlier, JGrasp? 
Now, assuming since you want to learn how to program, I'm going to assume you already know how to download and install a simple program. So I'm just going to leave you to that. Just pause the video, go download it, and we'll continue. All right, let's get started with the actual programming. All right, then. Now that you've decided that programming is for you, this is your first start in making your own game. We'll just learn some basic programming and then maybe in some later videos I'll show you some good programs to make games with. Alright, so once you have JGrasp up, this is what it should look like. Just go to File, New, Java. Alright then. And now um, some good programming trips is to add comments. Comments not only help you look back like when you're coming back to look at your uh, like files it tells you what the program is used for and it's not just for you what if you're like collaborating your uh, friends or collaborators have to know what the program is used for so to make a comment just do a double forward slash like that and just enter it in like say my first project alright then then the next part you just have to type in public class and then type in the name of your program and whatever the name is has to be the same as the save file the file you save it as and the name of the class has to be the same it just has to so we'll name it hello world because that's what I'll be teaching you first the hello world project then you have to press enter put in a curly brace now this next part's a little I don't know if you'll be able to remember it right off the bat. You may it's okay to copy and paste this. Just go to public static void. And you see how like JGrass highlights in purple. And that's one of the cool things about the program. Then say main parentheses capital S string. And then these two little symbols. Then args. And that's it. Enter curly brace. Then close both those with another curly brace. Then up here is the CSD that I was talking about earlier. Basically, it generates this little di diagram that indents it automatically for you. It also makes it easier to read. All right, then. Let's start the Hello World program. So just another thing that might be a little hard to remember. System capital system it has to be dot out java is very case sensitive you have to remember that print line that's not a in that's a ln then do a little quotation mark and type in oh, hello world or if you want to say screw the world if you hate it i don't care if you're suicidal or not just type in whatever you want Hello world, and then semicolons what ends the statement in Java. You have to type that in. All right, then right up here, you have to compile the project before you can run it. And you have to save it before you can compile it. So remember, it has to be the exact same thing. You can't change the save file. Then compile it. And let me just briefly talk about the windows down here. This is where all the compile messages come up. It'll tell you if there's an error or if it completes the operation successfully then here are some messages and when you run the program this is when it'll, where it'll come up let's see let's run it there you go hello world you just finished your first program alright then that's about it for this video and in the next video I'll teach you some of the basic math operations and I'll also teach you how to get user input this has been an AAR video in HD thanks for watching